So gas prices are going up and um, inflation is obviously taking its toll uh, on middle class and working class families. Um, But Secretary of Transportation and future presidential or vice presidential candidate, depending on, I guess, how many cigars are smoked by whom in whatever back room the Democrats Beside these things, uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, has some advice. He was asked about the Build Back Better plan uh, as it pertains to human infrastructure and gas prices and electric cars. This is Mayor Pete, now Secretary Pete, uh, on uh, this issue here. Just talk about the Build Back Better Act, which is the quote unquote uh, human infrastructure. Are there things in that legislation that's uh, now being cobbled together that is important to you as the Secretary of Transportation? Absolutely, yes. Uh, Obviously, most of the physical infrastructure work uh, was contemplated in the bill that was just signed, but there is more envisioned in the Build Back Better law. I'll give you one example. It contains incentives to make it more affordable to buy an electric vehicle, up to a $12,500 discount, in effect, for families thinking about getting an EV. Uh, Families that, once they own that electric vehicle, will never have to to worry about gas prices again. The people who stand to benefit most from owning an EV are often rural residents uh, who have the longest distances to drive. They they burn the most gas. And underserved urban residents in areas where uh, there are high gas prices and they're lower income. So they would gain the most by having that vehicle. But these are the very residents who have not always been connected uh, to electric vehicles that are viewed as as kind of a luxury item. If we can make an electric vehicle less expensive for everybody, more people can take advantage and we'll be building and and selling more American-made EVs. Uh, which means over time they'll become less expensive to make and to buy for everybody. There's talk about the build back. Okay, so, you know, so, okay, so there you have it. Mm -hmm. Um, Where if you buy an electric vehicle for, I don't know, $50,000, $60,000, then you don't have to worry about gas prices anymore. And under the Build Back Better plan, they're not going to cost $50,000, $60,000 because they're going to give you up to a $12,500 discount. So you're talking about, what for 36 to 48 grand you don't have to worry about gas prices anymore what's the problem sure sure yeah no there's there's no problem i'm, I'm glad they fixed that yeah i'm glad that i'm glad they cleared up that problem for people see I'm gonna, how I'm gonna, a guy I'm, as intelligent and as calm and as cool and as put together as pete Buttigieg can just come up with a solution so quickly so easily right there's nothing to it that's well, why you need that, smart people like Mayor Pete. It is in it high is. places. Yeah, you know? yeah I mean, he's so intelligent. Yeah. You know, he sees that. Yeah, I, I think his background as an evil consultant is uh, is serving him well as transportation secretary. Um, that definitely seems like some McKinsey shit right there. Yeah, I mean, um, we're giving you a twelve and a half thousand dollar discount. That's right. a big discount. Yeah. Now, of course, yeah. if you're giving someone a twelve and a half thousand dollar discount on a product, probably means the product is pretty far out of their price range to begin with, <laughs> right? One with that. Yeah, that that's the one flaw in the brilliant Pete Buttigieg plan to just give everybody a discount on electric cars, and then they don't have to worry about gas prices anymore. You know what I found interesting about this clip? I'm going to mute this clip, and I'm going to play a part of it again. Remember how in France uh, they passed some sort of regressive gas tax that was uh, you know, designed to sort of decrease their carbon footprint, but it was done on the backs of the working class of France? Yes. Do yes. you remember what movement that sparked? uh hang on yellow vests that's yellow vests yes so yes. you want a metaphor here here we're, we're, we're gonna mute this as pete is talking about his plan to give everybody electric car yeah. what do you see back behind him <laughs> lurking over his shoulder now watch as he talks more comes closer, comes closer. Uh, he's stalk he's stalking them. the yellow vest is coming for you see that's an omen look Get closer, yeah. closer, 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 closer. As you talk about this bullshit, we're going to have you just buy, go buy an electric car. See, it's very, you know, I, I recently learned to play the Halloween theme. Maybe we should take this over to my piano. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, look, all of these people in the upper echelons of the Democratic Party tend to be from rather privileged backgrounds. And that's the problem with having people like that. that that's something that Thomas Frank dwells on quite a bit, that sure, you want smart well-educated people in government, but the problem with it is that they have a class perspective that they bring to the way they understand society that can make them completely out of touch with the realities of life for the average person, and that's reflected in their politics and their policy proposals like this. I, it's just off Pete's radar when you're talking about underserved urban communities, which has become, you know, code for black people uh, and Latino people. Um, yeah, no, nah, everyone in Harlem, once where I live, once you tell them there's a $12,500 discount, there are going to be Teslas here as far as the eye can see. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's absurd. It's absurd. You have to never have lived a day in your life around people for whom the, the, the discount is irrelevant. <laughs> right. Propose something like that. Right. I mean, you I mean, Mercedes dealerships, Jaguar dealerships have, you know, whatever Memorial Day specials every sure. year. Do yeah. you see underserved urban populations flooding those dealerships on those weekends to take advantage of the discount? No. No. Uh, not as not only that, not as but a, a lot of people in these underserved urban populations don't drive because there's not much need for a car if you live in harlem or if you live in the bronx you know what i mean right. so why right. not just have a ubi for people with no cars doesn't isn't that a progressive solution or at least part of a solution that may decrease our carbon footprint you know well i i think a big part of the How about opposition... giving people a fucking electric car not a discount what if we just bought 30 million uh, EVs at 40 grand a pop. Maybe we can get them wholesale from Elon Musk or something. You know, what is that? 1.2 trillion bucks? Come on, yeah, let's do sure. that. That sure. ain't that do much. That. It's a, it'll cost less than the salt tax deduction that they uh, <laughs> have fought exactly. to keep in the I mean, bill you could probably better. get Joe Manchin to sign on for a third of that. So, okay, 10 million electric vehicles. We're just going to buy them and give them yeah, out there to you people. Go. You know, there you go. Why it'll, not? Be, it'll be like Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> <laughs> said Biden out to do that number. Pete Buttigieg would love to think of himself as an Oprah Winfrey. I mean, Pete Buttigieg would love to to have that name associated with him for his 2024 run, where he's going to need more than the 19 black supporters he currently has. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm basically to... just like Oprah, you know. <laughs> it's amazing to me that this chatter in the media is continuing. Um, you know, it's the usual thing. It's the same thing they did with, with anointing Hillary. You know, the people on high throw, the, throw this stuff out to their people in the media, and then the media starts to build this narrative. So clearly they're building this narrative, partly to see what, which way the wind's blowing, that, well, it's Kamala or Pete. Right. right. That, that that's clearly the successor. And it's it's really anatomy of how Democrats get brainwashed and then blindsided by reality, because you're going to have all these people who still trust these sources. They're being brainwashed. They're being gradually groomed to see that as a reasonable line of thinking. And if you step back for two seconds into reality. That is clearly a terrible idea. Either one of them is a terrible, terrible idea if what you want is to win an election. Terrible the for time, them, probably terrible for the world. Excellent for the Due Dissidents for podcast. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we will go viral. It's going to be if comedy gold. If they are a ticket, we will go viral. We, oh, yes. we, will, we, we are going to have so much material that eventually something we do is going to catch fire. If they we're are gonna the get, ticket. We're going to get tired of winning. Right. Yeah. We're going to get very tired of winning yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Democrats um, won't get tired of winning. The country won't get tired of winning. We will get tired of winning. I, I, I'm, I'm just bracing myself for that, for like liberals to start arguing that either one of them 
are a great candidate that we need to support. Oh, the whole thing it's, is going to be so hilarious. It's going to be amazing. Everything gonna is going to be so great. It's going to be so great. You're going to have pundits <laughs> go out and make their case for Pete. Pundits go out and make their case for Kamala. I mean, it's just it, going to be so fantastic. It seems to me, though, this one is a bridge too far. You know what I mean? Like, I, they're only going to be able to sell that to the, to the dumbest, most hardcore people left. Who yeah, but are, if we've learned like, something, I mean, only the people who are mourning the departure of Chris Cuomo today are going to be convinced by that. I think I think it's just too far. I mean, it's if the far. last five years have taught us anything, it's do not underestimate the stupidity of Democratic primary voters. Has it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. But as we saw in Virginia, um, you know, that population uh ebbs and flows you know? hey, it's not their <laughs> so fault virginia like, has a bunch of white supremacist latinos who voted for yeah. Youngkin. that's not the democrats you, you, fault, you, you know you the, the white we need more education Russell, is the problem again. with that you can't blame terry mccullough for that can't blame well, democrats for that well in russia a lot of white supremacist black people and brown people in virginia tip the scales for Youngkin, and of course russia and you know if Trump runs again, you're going to have Russia involved again. So, you know, let's not be too hard on them here. They have a lot to deal with. They got Russians. They have white supremacist black people, white supremacist Latinos, white supremacist Asians. You know, it, it there's a lot. They, 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 they're, there are a lot of what we would call uh, headwinds going into 2024. Yes. And that is really the problem that Kamala is facing. It has nothing to do with her creepy laugh at inappropriate moments like talking about locking up no it's that uh, all the black the border, people who don't like her are closet white supremacists they are they are uh, they literally they have the ropes in their closets yeah that's why they don't like pete either because pete is transportation yes. secretary he's he's trying to pass policies like uh discounted electric cars for underserved urban populations and all the white supremacist black people don't like that they're like well, i deserve you know, why, why should why should underserved urban populations get discounted Teslas? You know what I mean? That's yeah. not fair. Slavery ended 150 years ago, right? There are a lot well, of black it, people who feel that way about Pete Buttigieg. And so, you know, that that's a problem. That's a problem. And, uh, you know, the obvious answer to that would be, I guess, Amy Klobuchar. Yeah, well, with the the way that she delivered that hair in a blizzard line, I mean that was comedy gold, and and you know she nailed it every time. It was like it was like if you ever watch uh, multiple takes of Jack Nicholson doing his famous speech in A Few Good Men, and they had to keep doing it, and he, <laughs> he hit it the same way every time, every yeah. single time. Uh, that's Klobuchar. Yeah. So, you know, they have some th they have some issues that they have to work out, none of which are their fault. But, you know, I, I, I'm confident they'll 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 figure out a way through it. Yes. Yes. The country, not so much, but they will. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe wherever you saw it on YouTube, on Rumble or on Facebook. We have channels on all three of those platforms. Also, consider helping us create more content by becoming a member at patreon.com front slash do dissidents or on Facebook where you can become a supporter right through our Facebook page and get bonus content every week as well as call in access to our live stream shows. Thank you very much for your continued support.